In this video, we'll be looking at translational and post-translational levels of gene expression control. So we've had transcription happening and we've modified our mRNA so that it's ready to be translated into an actual protein. But we can still decide whether or not we want a protein to be made on this level here and we can even change the structure of our final protein in post-translational uh, control. So first of all, we'll have a look at this one here. And in a nutshell, basically is deciding whether or not we want translation to go ahead. So switching the mechanism on and off. If we want to downregulate translation, meaning we don't want the uh, translation process to occur, we don't want the protein to be made, there are two ways to do it. The first way to do it is to degrade the mRNA, because if we don't have the mRNA, then, well, basically we don't have translation happening. Another way of doing it is to have inhibitory proteins binding to the mRNA. So if the inhibitory proteins bind to it, it will stop the mRNA from binding to the ribosome. And in this case, you just lost the place for translation. However, we can also allow translation to happen. And the way is to uh, activate initiation factors. And what these factors will do is to allow the mRNA to bind to the ribosome. And this is another interesting thing to note, is that activation of these factors is done by phosphorylation, meaning that we add a phosphate group to the proteins here to activate them. And actually a lot of proteins or enzymes can be activated through phosphorylation. And this chemical reaction is done by protein kinases. And interestingly, these kinases can be also activated by AMP, cyclic AMP, in which you are familiar with from uh, previous studies. And that is the translational level of gene expression control. Now, for post-translational control, it really just means that we're modifying protein. And as you will know, it can happen in the Golgi apparatus, for example. And again, there are different ways to do this. So, for example, we can add uh, non-protein groups to it. Things like hyperprotein and glycoprotein. So what we're doing here is to, for example, we can add a carbohydrate chain to it, or lipids, or phosphate, uh, to change it slightly differently. Or we can also modify amino acids to form special bonds. For example, we can change an amino acid to cysteine to form disulfide bridges. And it depends on what uh, structure of protein or enzyme you would like. A third way is to uh, change or affect uh, the protein folds into their tertiary or even quaternary structures. So a quick reminder, tertiary structure are the 3D structure of a protein. The quaternary structure meaning uh, the combination of subunits uh, make up a functioning protein. And the last way for post-translational modification is modification by cyclic AMP. So if you remember from the LAC operon video, the CAMP will bind to CAMP receptor protein, CRP there, and then this complex can then bind to RNA polymerase to upregulate its activity for the transcription and translation of the structural genes. And another way is for CAMP to activate kinases, and these kinases then go off to phosphorylate and activate other enzymes and proteins. Very similar to this reaction here for the activation of the initiation factors. And there you have it, this is the translational and post-translational control of gene expression.